Okay, can everyone hear me? Let's uh, let's get started. This is Bruce at Traders for Traders. And uh, let me get the questions up. Do that. Okay, all right. So um, yeah, let's get started then. Um, so uh, I'm Bruce at Traders for Traders and uh, uh, this is the webinar for preparing for the markets and how to uh, go through some sort of methodology uh, to engage uh, before you start uh, any sort of uh, trading activity. All right, so uh, I don't know if any of you guys caught my last webinar, uh, but uh, at Traders for Traders, uh, the fundamental analysis for us is uh, rather important. Um, we look at the central bank sentiment, uh, the economic data, and the geopolitical events, and this uh, uh, leads up to uh, a big chunk of uh, how I prepare for a uh, morning uh, routine or um, you know, preparation before uh, engaging in, in any trades. And the reason being is like um, with the fundamentals, uh, you know, the last webinar uh, creating a fundamental outlook uh, kind of went over the challenge here that uh, look at any chart and start to unravel some of the bigger moves uh, in that chart. And you will see that for the most part, uh, these moves are based on fundamental data or fundamental activities in the market. And uh, that's what we want to be aware of. Okay, so uh, that uh, uh, obviously makes a big chunk of what um, uh, you know preparing for these markets is uh, is all about. Uh, and uh, so, uh, basically, um, what's uh, in, important to do uh, for me is is to have um, some sort of um, uh, you know outlook here uh, that, uh, you know, I come to uh, on my own, you know, uh, fruition here, my own sort of uh, bias and, and outlook. And, uh, you know, I want to be on the same side as all of the other big traders out there, uh, the banks and institutions. And uh, I know that they look at these things uh, and traders for traders, uh, Brad Gilbert, the, the CEO was a, a trader in the banks for, for over 20 years. Uh, with a chief dealer, senior chief dealer at Citibank and uh, uh, Commonwealth Bank of Australia, as well as Toronto Dominion. So uh, we know that uh, they look at these things uh, and then uh, they put that together with their technicals. Okay. So, uh, you know, this is a, it's kind of an interesting uh, webinar in a sense. I've been through so many different uh, morning routines and they, they really didn't work for me. Uh, they were just uh, too, um, you know, stagnant or just like a, it, it was just too um, uh, contrived and uh, directional and it just took all the fun out of it. So, uh, you know, once I stopped doing that uh, and started just uh, poking around uh, and then just started kind of building, uh, enjoying it um, and having a passion and interest uh, with the markets, uh, then uh, this the routine uh, kind of naturally just evolved. All right. So that's how I'm going to go through this. Uh, so uh, it's, um, uh, you know, there's, there's um, points that I cover, but th these points, there's no really specific order. Uh, and I think that's uh, important for, for anybody uh, is to have your own order uh, of going through it. You know, what, what works for you. Right. So, I mean, this is, this is my way of looking at it and, uh, uh, you know, uh, the other other traders look at it uh, very, very differently, uh, even at, uh, you know, Traders for Traders or even Brad himself, uh, you know, he covers these things a little bit differently. Uh, at least uh, the order of them uh, is uh, quite, quite different. Okay, so we'll start off with um, the week ahead. And uh, we actually cover uh, webinars uh, uh, on Sunday evening, and uh, we go over the entire week ahead. Uh, and uh, I'll just bring up Forex Factory. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's uh, the FX Street uh, calendar is uh, is excellent as well. Uh, I just kind of prefer looking at Forex Factory is kind of uh, uh, nicely listed out and uh, has a bit more data that uh, I like to look at that uh, unfolds here. And I'll, I'll show you in just a minute. So, you know, looking at the week ahead, uh, you can start, uh, you know, here on Sunday and uh, you start to kind of uh, get a picture for what are going to be the big events for the week, right? So on th this week here, it's, you know, this is rather funny. The last couple of weeks in the month, there's really very little economic data that comes out. 
And uh, due to that, you don't get a lot of uh, you know directional price movements. In fact, what it turns into is rather choppy market. And uh, that, uh, you know, if, if you don't see any sort of uh, a big events uh, that are coming up, like uh, if, you, if you don't see the FOMC or like uh, some sort of central uh, bank release with the ECB or, uh, it's, you know, some other um, like non-farm uh, payroll uh, event that happens on Friday. Well, you know, the market uh, will, they look, they look for those big key events and they prepare for them. Uh, so that usually the first few days, uh, when, when there are those events, usually the, the days uh, preceding those events, uh, you see rather uh, slow um, price action. And the reason being is <laughs> they don't want to take a, No one wants to take a position before the event. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, with the, you know, the, the same kind of thing happens with, with the entire month. Okay. And uh, it's good to, uh, to know that. Now, if I come up here to uh, beginning of June, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see in here, there's uh, uh, you know, quite a few different things. We can start right off here with the cash rate and rate statement from uh, the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia. Uh, and then I think uh, we have the Kiwi in here as well. We have the Bank of Canada and their rate statement here. Now, these are, these are really big events. And this is what, um, you know, starts the um, uh, price action here. This was the big event that everyone was waiting for on June 5th. Uh, this was the ECB press conference. And, uh, you know, let's just take a look at the at price here. Uh, this was um, the event over here uh, that was on, uh, uh, yeah, the uh, the fifth here. And uh, you can see the volatility and, and the spikes in, uh, in price action. OK, so uh, we know that, uh, in fact, um, you can see uh, from the low uh, to the uh, the high uh, this entire the last entire three weeks of price action has uh, taken place within uh, the the range that uh, was created by that uh, ECB press conference. Okay, so that's why um, these uh, you know beginning of the week are you know trying to get a bigger picture of what's going on out there uh, fundamentally and with the data. Uh, you can, uh, you know, start to, uh, you know, change your uh, plan of, of, of attack of how you're going to execute your trades and what, what sort of movements you're looking for. So uh, that would be, you know, the first couple of weeks, there's usually a lot of data. OK, you'll you'll see your GDP reports come out. Uh, you'll see your unemployment. Uh, you'll see CPI and uh, some of the retail sales. And that's um, that's usually what you see the first couple of weeks. Now, the last couple of weeks. You don't see too much, um, and uh, uh, therefore uh, the whole kind of strategy starts to shift, and you start to look for, uh, you know, action that uh, is going to be range bound uh, and false breaks. Okay, and uh, here's a fantastic example, just looking at euro last couple of days, uh, some really really nice false breaks. Uh, you can see here, uh, if we contain uh, this this price action here. Uh, you can see the high uh, false break above that right back down into the range. So anyone who uh, caught a breakout trade or, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, this is at 136.50, the figure up here, you can see that the uh, price just hit it uh, and then fell off. Uh, you know, there's a lot of option barriers up here. Uh, so uh, a lot of those might get triggered or stopped out. Uh, and uh, then, uh, you know, price reverses immediately. Okay. So the, they're targets, these uh, bigger figure numbers. And, and then you can see here, if we kind of uh, tighten up a little bit, well, uh, you can see the swing down here uh, that, uh, yeah, price has definitely gone through that. Uh, and also this swing down here uh, and price has also gone through that. So a uh, lot of uh, kind of wicked uh, false breaks happening uh, with Euro. And that's to be expected because uh, there's really nothing else to be driving price right now. So it's going to stay in a range, right? So that's uh, kind of um, looking at the bigger picture. And that helps me uh, assess, uh, you know, kind of uh, what's going on out there in general uh, and, and what I should be uh, starting to think about uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, trade execution and some of the strategies I want to implement. Okay, so anyway, uh, moving along, um, then you know, look look toward the um, the, the bigger events uh, during that week, and if you don't see any, well, like this week, there there really isn't too much. Um, so uh, you know, you, I start to kind of uh, 
uh, pick and choose uh, some of the events that I think have the potential for moving price. And I'll highlight, I'll highlight those, okay? So that, that this is just marking out my week ahead, all right? So, uh, you know, there's existing home sales. I, I really expect too much out of that. Uh, the German flash manufacturing PMI, yeah, I, I did. Uh, if there was going to be some uh, uh, variance in some of the data that came out uh, that was different than expectations, then I would have uh, expected uh, some price movement here, especially because at the same time, well, a half an hour difference here, uh, we have the uh, French flash manufacturing PMI, uh, the services PMI, and then the German data as well as the, as well, a half an hour after that, we have the uh, Eurozone uh, flash manufacturing PMI and flash services PMI. So, you know, this is a good time for, uh, for price to move in. And that's exactly uh, what we saw on, uh, on Monday. Okay. Uh, then coming down uh, through the rest of the week. Uh, yeah. Maybe the German uh, IFO uh, business climate would be uh, something good to look at. I uh, might see something here on the uh, consumer confidence uh, and new home sales since they both come out at the same time. And we can see both numbers were were uh, better than expected. So this this starts to at least for me it starts to um, uh, map out uh, direction, okay? And uh, where uh, I think it has the potential for uh, price to move. These these events, um, you know, again they're not as important as uh, some of the uh, the other uh, events. Uh, now the core durable goods and uh, the final GDP here. Um, you know, we saw some price movement uh, just yesterday on that. And if we take a look at Euro, uh, we can see that movement right here. Okay. So uh, that's, uh, uh, you know, the best uh, potential for, for moving price. Uh, and we can see the reason being was because the, the data was weak. Okay. And uh, therefore, we saw Euro strength and dollar weakness. Uh, but, uh, you know, it didn't have too much. It was a short term, uh, uh, a short lived event. Because uh, if you look over here, uh, you know, uh, price, it basically uh, uh, allowed uh, uh, price to uh, march up to the 136.50 figure and then to sell off uh, rather, rather steeply. Okay. So uh, anyway, that's um, uh, the way that uh, I start to uh, map out the week ahead. And then I start to look into the, um, the specific days. Okay. So it's kind of a, a drilling down process. Uh, and uh, this just gives me a, a better idea of when price is going to move and, and what it might do. Okay, so then when I come, uh, you know, to my trade station in the morning, uh, one of the first things that that uh, I want to do is I look at um, some of the previous events uh, and uh, you know how how did price uh, react with some of those events, and uh, uh, then. Um, I, I want to, uh, I mean, you can see here, like, let's look at, uh, you know, the 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. here uh, with the, uh, all these flash manufacturing and, and services PMI. Uh, this was the uh, the price action right in here, right? Or I'm sorry, was that Monday or Tuesday? Just a minute. That was Monday. Okay. So, uh, yeah, this was the, uh, the price action uh, uh, back and forth in here on Monday. All right. And uh, yeah, you can see it just, uh, uh, you know, there was uh, uh, some expectations and then it sold off uh, and it came right back into the range. All right. So and that, and that's to be expected because look at the, you know, some of the data here. All right. So it was kind of uh, back and forth, a little less than expected, uh, more or less. Uh, yeah. Across across the board. Um, but uh, and that's why we see the drop here. Right. But uh, uh, price snapped right back uh, to the to the 36 level and uh, has been. Uh, and it held there for for a couple of days, right? It kept on banging back and forth. Uh, so uh, that's um, something that I want to look at and 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 assess uh, of previous price action and uh, and previous um, economic data that was released. And uh, I want to see uh, uh, how how price reacted to it, and and then it'll give me some sort of insight to uh, some of the economic data coming out in the near future, and then how I might want to uh, uh, have it strategize uh, my trade execution uh, for some of those data releases, okay? Uh, so that's uh, how I'll start my day uh, and start looking at that. And then um, I'll come in and I'll start looking at the technicals. Uh, and, uh, you know, for the, uh, to get a bigger picture, um, I'm always, uh, you know, drilling out. Uh, I look at the, I start with the weekly 
and uh, I start drawing trend lines uh, on the uh, on the weekly and uh, very very simple uh, technical analysis uh, and uh, then I start drilling down into the dailies uh, and start drawing a, a little bit closer uh, you know lines of support and resistance on the trend lines uh, and then uh, once I have uh, that kind of all figured out then I can I drill down through the hourlies and I start looking there okay and uh, this brings me closer to the market and you can see here this indicator that we have uh, the white uh, dotted vertical lines are uh, the weak uh, end markers and then uh, the uh, black vertical lines are a day of uh, price activity. So this is one, two, three, four, five days of activity within one week. So I can very, very, um, you know, clearly go in and uh, figure out uh, which day it was, uh, more or less what session it is. Uh, and then the uh, horizontal lines here are the uh, the big figures, uh, the, like 36 uh, level and then 3650 level. Uh, this is just in the 50 markers. Okay. Uh, and uh, that, um, you know, I, I want to look at the, you know, these lines of uh, support and resistance and how price reacted within them. Okay. So, uh, you know, you can see on Monday, well, the data wasn't quite uh, good enough to cause any sort of uh, breakdown of uh, uh, Euro dollar uh, to break through uh, a line of, uh, at that time, it was up here. Okay. For, uh, based on uh, low on Friday. And you can see it bounced very nicely off of that trend line, uh, right back up to 136 a figure. Okay, so anyway, uh, you know, I continue to adjust uh, those lines as we, uh, you know, move ahead further into the future. Uh, and then um, uh, that, uh, you know, more or less kind of, you know, mar uh, marks out my my day. Uh, I'm just going through the example here with. Uh, Euro, uh, you know, obviously I'll be doing this with all the pairs uh, and uh, all of the majors. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I'll look at some crosses as well. But uh, this is just kind of in general. Now, once um, a, uh, a data release um, starts to pop up and, you know, maybe I want to uh, trade that data release live, uh, then, then I start to look at um, uh, things and filter them a little differently. Uh, you know, like I'll come in and I'll start to break down, like let's say this uh, core durable goods here, uh, you know, you can uh, start to look at the history of, of them here. And you can start to look at what the actual number was versus the forecast. And you can start to piece together a little bit of history of, of your expectations of what you think this number might be. Okay. So uh, yeah, you can see here, that uh, it was on more or less on par here, a little less than expected, much better than expected in April, a uh, little less than expected in March, and uh, uh, better than expected, uh, a nice number there in February. So it's kind of a back and forth. Um, you know, actually, I did have expectations for this to be a pretty strong number. I was a little surprised that it was weak. But the GDP, this one was pretty clear uh, to me. Uh, you know, uh, I had uh, actually seen uh, some really bad numbers with the, this is the final GDP and, you know, there, there's three different kinds uh, of GDP in the, in the U.S. We have the advance, the preliminary, and then the final. And the advance and the preliminary numbers were terrible, right? So, uh, therefore, you know, I had uh, low expectations for this final number uh, being uh, uh, strong. And, uh, and that's exactly what, what happened. Uh, we had a very weak number here. Okay, so that's what uh, kind of helps me build a bias is you start to look at uh, some of the history. Okay, and uh, then also too, what I'll do is I'll come up and I'll start to filter. Uh, you know, I like the filtering effects here. Um, you know, let's go with uh, US dollar, all right? And uh, uh, I'll start to filter through, you know, some of the um, uh, previous data to sort of assess what's going on out there. And, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the condition of uh, of the dollar okay the reason being is not only for the data release um you know if you know we had gone through um this uh let's see here the fundamental analysis uh the economic data is a piece uh that fits into basically the um, uh, central bank sentiment this is this is the key part here and uh, uh, once uh, you, you try to uh, assess and, and read through the, uh, the central bank sentiment, 
uh, then uh, you know you, you look to the economic data to see um, uh, how that supports the the current assessment or the, you know the current central bankers outlook uh, and how they may change policy in the near future okay uh, so that's what uh, helps by filtering and looking through some of this and you know you can obviously uh, filter through the entire month as well uh, and then uh, start to uh, look through some of these things and just get a feel for what's going on. Now, I, I know this, this all sounds like it's kind of um, complex and a, and a lot uh, to look at, but it, it, really, it really isn't. It, you know, it, it happens um, rather quickly. Uh, it really takes maybe about 15 minutes because, uh, you know, your technicals are already, you know, more or less uh, there. Uh, and uh, uh, you already have an idea because you've done your homework for the week ahead. Uh, so you've kind of already built up a lot of homework. So, you know, you're just looking at kind of what, what happened in the past and what's happening in the future here. Uh, and you, you start to build these biases, right? And, and that's what I think is critical, uh, is you start to have uh, bias and expectations uh, for price action. And then you can start to uh, uh, make um, trade execution decisions uh, based on your technical levels, right? So... Anyway, uh, you know, looking at the U.S. dollar, you start to get a feel for uh, some of the data that's coming out. Like we've seen some pretty bad um, retail sales numbers recently, uh, as well as the uh, the GDP has been pretty bad. So uh, that starts to, you know, it, it's it starts to piece it together. It's kind of um the the bias comes from questioning, uh, and uh, uh, once once I start to um, uh, question things out there, uh, what's happening in the economy and, and, um, and why, uh, then, you know, I, I start to, I can start to put the puzzle together, you know? So for example, uh, with this kind of wishy-washy data back and forth, uh, with, uh, you know, some, some of the reports are good, like, you know, the CPI was good on, uh, on the 17th here. Um, and, uh, but the, um, you know, retail sales were terrible. Right. Well, what does that mean? Uh, you know, I, I'm imagining what that means is uh, Yellen uh, at her next um, um, FOMC meeting is probably going to be rather dovish uh, on her approach with the, with the markets. Uh, and wh what does that mean? That means that the, there's going to be free money still floating around out there. OK, so they're going to be very accommodative uh, and uh, uh, toward their, their monetary policy. And, uh, you know, we can see that play out uh, and uh, very, very, very clearly here, uh, we can see it play out by just looking at some of the stock markets. Now, if we look at the S&P, uh, let's just take a look at the daily, you know, all time highs and it just continues to go up and it's still in an uptrend. There's no reason to believe that this is going to be turning around. Not not yet. All right. And, uh, you know, this week, uh, like I'd said, uh, some wicked moves, uh, we're seeing uh, a real nice uh uh, false break here to the low uh, a couple times right here and right here and also below the trend line as well. Okay. And even if I move that over, we have still yet another false break here. So yeah, banging around back in the range and this is to be expected. Okay. So anyway, uh, that's where um, I can start to piece this together and, and I start to, um, it, it fits the, the picture, right? And, uh, uh, the one thing, um, you know, I, I also, we, we also, um, I'll get to the geopolitical tensions in a minute. Um, you know, then you, you can start to look at some of the correlated markets, okay, uh, and uh, start to piece uh, some of that together too. Uh, you know, so, um, yeah, I mean, like looking uh, right here at, at the stock markets, you, you know, here's the Dow. Uh, we can see it's a bit weaker than the S&P. Uh, NASDAQ still pretty strong there. Um, uh, looking at the DAX, uh, rather weak at the moment. Um, and uh, then, um, you know, I can start to um, uh, get a feel for uh, these um, these correlated markets in 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 general, and um, uh, that uh, is very very helpful. All right. So uh, then, uh, uh, you know, once I've uh, taken a look here at uh, the the market. Uh, uh, data, you know, to kind of assess the, the overall strength of, uh, of an economy, uh, then, um, uh, you know, I, I, I zoom into, um, you know, the, that, that specific day uh, and uh, uh, look at my technicals, and now I have a bias, 
Okay, and so now I'm starting to look for uh, specific entries uh, based on uh, support and resistance. Okay. All right. Um, let's see here. Uh, one of the other things, okay, so the last piece of the puzzle, that's the data, and we've, the central bank sentiment, um, you know, I, I went over that in the uh, previous webinar, uh, you know, looking at uh, uh, reading the uh, uh, press releases for the uh, uh, central bank statements uh, as soon as they come out, and, um, you know, the, these are, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's not very long, uh, and, uh, you know, if I don't, kind of remember uh, earlier in the month when it came out uh, exactly what some of the details were. Well, I'll go back and reread them uh, and maybe read the minutes uh, of the FOMC meeting uh, and the uh, ECB or, you know, Reserve Bank of uh, Australia and, uh, and, and start to get a feel for what's going on out there, right? And th this can, uh, this can tell me so much. And once, once I, you know, I already have this kind of data in, in you know, uh, in the back of my, my mind because, uh, you know, it was earlier in the month. And uh, so I know what's going on. Well, you know, the RBNZ raises their um, uh, official cash rate at 3.25%. Well, you know, it, it just, one plus one is basically, you know, it just says that, uh, well, people are going to start to enter into the carry trade, right? So they're going to start, uh, uh, you know, uh, buying up, uh, the Kiwi and uh, also the Aussie because they have high interest rates and uh, they're going to start selling the, uh, the wheat currency. And, uh, you know, that, uh, that kind of uh, a sentiment, um, you know, we're seeing that play out right now in the markets. Uh, Kiwi is very, very strong. When we look over at, uh, at Aussie, Aussie is a little weaker, but it's still strong. It's still, you know, uh, holding in there. And you can see it here looking pretty poised uh, to break out uh, and uh, come up and test the 95 level. So uh, we'll we'll see we'll see what the data is as it comes out. Um, so you know that uh, helps me prepare for um, this having this kind of uh, central bank sentiment. And uh, that was the other piece to the puzzle. The last piece is the geopolitical stuff. And uh, I try to keep this rather simple. Uh, and the way uh, I can do that is by uh, I just I just stick with uh, Bloomberg and Reuters. And I just look at some of the uh, top stories in the news. Uh, and, uh, you know, one thing can lead to another. I mean, you can see, obviously, with the tensions in Iraq, um, you know, oil, uh, you know, going back and forth. Uh, there's an article about oil drops as violence in Iraq seems um, sparing, uh, you know, crude supplies. So, well, that that's important, right? I mean, uh, uh, that gives you insight to, uh, you know, well, let, let's take a look. Uh, how did price react to uh, to that? Well, here, here you can see the sell-off just today, uh, last few hours in uh, in oil, okay? And uh, w what does that mean? I mean, uh, for the currencies, you know, these correlated markets, you know, you start to piece the whole thing together. Uh, let's let's jump over to the dollar CAD. We'll probably see some CAD weakness, right? And uh, well, yeah, last few hours we have seen a little bit of CAD weakness, but the CAD has been rather strong lately. Uh, and that was due to over here with some uh, very good CPI and retail sales data. But, uh, you know, the correlation here uh, obviously is a little, little weaker uh, than uh, some of the uh, uh, economic data right now. Uh, but it does, they do play into each other. And uh, I look toward, uh, you know, put, putting these things together by looking at the uh, uh, market sentiment that's out there. Okay. So I, I keep it rather simple. I stick with some of the headlines here. And then uh, if I do drill down, well, I, I do this every day. I'll, I'll go to economy, open that to a new tab. I'll go into markets and I'll open uh, uh, currencies in a new tab. And, uh, you know, these articles, I, I try to keep it light. I start to read some of them. They can be rather short. And then one thing leads to another. Uh, you know, you start to uh, read about uh, uh, who, you know, uh, what some of these articles are about. Uh, and uh, who the players are and what the expectations are. And then now um, that, that piece of the puzzle, now I can kind of filter it back through, uh, you know, some of the uh, uh, economic data and uh, how that might also affect the central bank sentiment. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, you know, the, um, uh, the other thing, looking at the, um, uh, you know, related markets and the correlated markets, 
the the next step is to you know like i like i was talking about the carry trades uh you know you start to look at the crosses uh and uh, it's, it's just they met these these questions when you know i, I really like the uh, my process in the sense that uh it leads to uh another question well what about uh, uh you know uh, euro kiwi well l let's take a look i mean you know we're, we're expecting that this is one a weak currency against a strong currency now this is uh, euro kiwi on the daily well you know we're seeing a pretty pretty massive uh, uh difference here this this is the uh, the month of uh june uh and uh you know so far it's moved about 700 pips or so all right so i'm looking therefore uh for opportunities to go short uh euro kiwi all right so uh uh, this is based on, you know, the dovish outlook from the ECB and Mario Draghi, uh, as well as a pretty, pretty hawkish uh, stance uh, by Graham Wheeler over in New Zealand, right? And uh, we're seeing that play out. And uh, uh, so now uh, I start to drill down, look at my technicals, and I start to look for entry points, okay? So um, that about sums it up. Uh, any questions? And where is my questions list? Just a moment here. If I can find that. Chat. Okay. I got the chat. No, I'm sorry, just a moment, guys. Okay, Q and A. There we go. Got it. All right. Zero questions. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's uh, that wraps wraps it up then. And um, uh, yeah, that's um, you know take it from there. Um, so. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, no, I can see I can see some of the questions here in the chat. Okay, sorry guys. Um, let's see, what are the major events next week you feel? Okay, let's take a look at that. Um, Murtaza. Uh, all right, uh, let's uh, start to check it out here. Uh, next week's gonna be pretty good, I think, uh, because it's gonna be the first of the um, month. Uh, we definitely have. Um, ugh, hold on. All right, and let me come back to all. Again, you know, I, I'm filtering here just, uh, you know, I don't look at the, uh, you know, I may look at some of the weaker data, uh, the lower impacting data, as well as the, I want to look at some of the um, uh, holidays. Uh, you know, I'll do that in the beginning of the week. But other than that, I just keep it on these two. Uh, you know, keep it simple. Look at for look for the uh, larger impacting uh, data uh, and, uh, and just keep it at that, all right? So... Let's take a quick look. Um, let's see. I know we have the um, non-farm is actually going to be on uh, Thursday due to the 4th of July holiday on Friday. So, uh, yeah, Marcus will definitely be uh, looking forward to that. Um, and uh, let's see. Yeah, here, here, here we go here um, with the unemployment uh, non-farm change here. Uh, we have an ECB press conference at the same time. I think that's going to be uh, uh, something to look at. Anytime you see uh, central bankers speaking, well, look it up. Um, you know, see what they have to say or, you know, where they're uh, uh, speaking. If, if it's some university, a graduation or something, well, you know, we don't need to worry about that too much. But, uh, you know, this is going to be speaking at the, the IFM. All right. Um, IMF and uh, in DC. So uh, yeah, there could be something that, uh, you know, uh, comes out and uh, we, we definitely want to be aware of that. Uh, so I'll be trading lightly during that time and uh, looking for maybe, you know, I can watch it uh, on, uh, on TV or something. Uh, and um, let's see, early in the week, uh, not too much. Um, interested in this Chinese um, 
a manufacturing PMI. I think that uh, uh, would be good to know. Um, and um, let's see. Yeah, GDP, CAD, obviously. Uh, oh, well, this is going to be a great one here. We have the uh, um, you know, Reserve Bank of Australia. Uh, this will be big. Uh, I'll be I'll be uh, following that very closely to see what the, uh, the you know, um, uh, Stevens has to say there. Uh, we have the manufacturing PMI out of uh, uh, the UK here. Uh, also, U.S. Uh, manufacturing PMI. Uh, you know, start to get a feel for these events too. I mean, you know, these things build upon one another. Um, you know, it, sometimes they're they're more important than other times. Uh, you know, uh, for example, uh, manufacturing in uh, in China is is important, right? Uh, we need to we need to know that data. Uh, it's uh, uh, gives us insight to. Uh, how they're doing, and then that can give us insight to other emerging markets. Okay, uh, and that's where we, we started to see the slide actually in the emerging markets due to the weakness from China. So, uh, I think uh, that that gives kind of a, a good overview there. Um, and um, let's see, Christiane, um, you're confused all the time with fundamentals. I don't understand well. Uh, sometimes some indices come positive and currencies going down. Yeah, it's it's all about expectations um, and uh, uh, with the fundamentals. Now, I, I can tell you that you know with the bigger, more important releases, um, it, it's it's all it's a challenge. Yeah, it's you know it. Um, I, I suggest, um, you know, I, I really tried to um, keep it really simple with the previous webinar, uh, you know, creating a fundamental outlook. And it's here on FX Street. So um, uh, I hope that helps you. Uh, and I, I'd point you in that direction. Just, you know, keep it simple. Uh, but look at some of the bigger uh, releases and the bigger events. Because, you know, as a retail trader, I mean, we don't really know uh, what's important until uh, you know, we become more experienced with, with uh, uh, some of these uh, events and what they represent and what they mean, uh, because there's so much news that doesn't matter, okay? Uh, and when we see, uh, we follow uh, news that doesn't matter, well, price can go all over the place. It, it just, you know, the market doesn't care about that stuff. But if they start to have expectations for, um, you know, obviously CPI or GDP or unemployment uh, figures, those are going to be important. Right, and um, uh, if they're outside of what their expectations are, we should see price move. Right, and uh, uh, that's a majority of the time. All right, so um, you know you can you can bank on that one, um, and uh, just keep it simple. Uh, look for some of the uh, more important um, releases and uh, uh, start to build expectations for them. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's see. What do you think about the, the Aussie dollar going down? All right, let's take a quick look at Aussie dollar. And uh, yeah, you know, I think, um, uh, again, this was, um, well, you know, we saw the spike here, right? And actually, this was kind of a nice a nice bounce right off of, uh, of some support here. Actually, the line was over here. And uh, you can see that uh, it banged around in here, kind of uh, broke down below, broke up above. Uh, and then uh, finally, we saw some strength here, and this was on the back of the weak numbers uh, out of the states with the uh, uh, GDP, final GDP, and the durable goods. All right, that's what spiked it off. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, as I um, you know kind of uh, started off the, the uh, webinar th this week, my expectations aren't for any sort of big directional moves. In fact, I I'm looking for some wicked uh, you know false breaks and range trading. Right, so uh, for it, it to it to come off and it to sell off like this, well, that doesn't um, uh, surprise me whatsoever. Uh, in fact, we can see a really nice false break here on Monday. Okay, now this is the Chinese data that we looked at uh, uh, in the beginning of the week, and uh, it was uh, better than expected. Well, you know, uh, Aussie dollar is going to benefit from that because of its proximity and its exportations to China. Uh, so we saw a real nice move to the upside banged around there all day long and finally sold off a bit. And you can see this is, this is, these are the uh, lines of support and resistance that uh, the um, uh, market makers out there are looking at. 
you know, we see a nice breakout here. Well, it's to new highs, right? And uh, uh, after after that, uh, you know, it uh, it just wasn't sustainable enough, right? So, uh, you, you know, it it fell back into the range, uh, came right back up, and uh, what was um, uh, resist or support? Uh, well, it was resistance. Then it turned into um, uh, support, and you can see it just bounced uh, off back off of it here, which you know it turned into once it came through again. Now this became uh, resistance, right? So uh, nice bounce back off of that, and boom down uh, down below the the, uh, the swing here before that Chinese data. All right, so a lot of uh, stop running basically stops you know people getting stopped out uh, that uh, uh, had put their stops down here or below this swing. Well, they're they're out of the market now, right? So a lot of wicked moves when there is not a lot of data coming out. But believe me, when when there is the data coming out, uh, it won't come back to get these stops. It'll just continue to trend, right? If it's strong enough, and uh, and that's what uh, uh, we'll 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 see what happens with. Uh, I'm very curious to see uh, uh, what happens with uh, Stevens uh, and the RBA next week. Okay, all right. Um, Economics is always better in hindsight. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, the, one of the uh, one of the things that at, at Traders for Traders we teach uh, is, you know, we we're looking at the central bank. This is the key here. I mean, the, the central bank sentiment. Uh, you know, these these guys, the, the central bankers, uh, they're our friends. I mean, they're trying to be transparent and um, as transparent as they can with their monetary policy. Because uh, they want to direct traders uh, to go a specific uh, way that helps them, so uh, it's in their interest to be transparent with us. Uh, so uh, they look at economic data to assess and make their monetary policy decisions. Okay, so that's why we look at the economic data as well. All right. So when we see a weak CPI or GDP number, well, what your expectation is then at that point? probably the central bank is going to be a lot more dovish and accommodative toward the economy if they're starting to see weakness. All right. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, it's more to do with expectations than all absolute numbers. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, that's, that's exactly right. Um, uh, Merk Taza. Uh, that's, uh, that's what the, uh, you know, the market is uh, trying to uh, work out. It's, it's market sentiment, right? And uh, it's future sentiment. OK, so, uh, you know, that's that's another thing like like uh, I went over um, how to uh, assess the uh, uh, the data. Um, and then uh, when you when you start to um, have expectations for like a good release, well, you know, you know what you can do is you can start to trade that in advance. OK, so, uh, uh, you know, uh, like uh, with the pound, there's been some really strong data coming out of uh, the UK. Well, let's take a look at pound. Right. Uh, I just uh, just recently, you know, it's kind of sold back out. It's been wishy-washy here um, this week, and that's to be expected, right? But uh, uh, you know, look at on the daily chart. Look at pound, you know, and this is based on really good data uh, that's been coming out of uh, uh, UK. And uh, uh, Governor Carney uh, has definitely, uh, uh, you know, talked about uh, raising interest rates recently sooner than expected, uh, and. Uh, well, we're we're seeing more more and more movement to the upside. Okay, so uh, that's uh, yeah. I mean, just uh, try to try to keep it simple. Uh, and um, uh, you know, it all it all comes back to interest rates and uh, and the central bank uh, direction. Uh, and uh, everything else more or less supports that, except for those geopolitical events, which you know can be uh, uh, kind of a, a hassle there. All right. Um, you know, a little uh, promotional uh, stuff. I just want to uh, uh, clue you guys in. Um, we do have uh, a new program, uh, and uh, I just, you know, you might be interested. Um, uh, it's um, uh, it's going to be. It's called the Trading Academy. Okay. Now, what this is is a four week long. Uh, you know, we monitor your trades, uh, and uh, and then. Uh, you know, you, you actually will be trading with us uh, and not virtually. I mean, you'll be like trading at the desk with us. So this is on site. Uh, right now, it's only offered in Sydney, Australia, but we will be uh, you know, expanding that in the near future uh, to uh, New York uh, and perhaps Hong Kong and London as well. 
Okay. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a nice program. Uh, you know, I, I um, just will go over it briefly with you guys uh, that, uh, uh, you know, if you can show that, uh, uh, you know, trading with us, that you start to uh, understand how to control your risk and trade consistently, well, then, uh, uh, you know, you, you move on to uh, next steps, uh, which ultimately will lead uh, to, um, uh, you know, uh, trading a, a live account that would be uh, our money, uh, about $20,000. And then that can also lead to full-time position with us. Uh, so, uh, you know, as you uh, uh, progress and uh, and we assess your your trading uh, activity, then uh, this can lead to some really nice opportunities in the in the future for you if you want to make this into a career. Okay, so uh, there's not really many people out there offering something like this. So uh, it's just in uh, we're just starting to roll it out now. Uh, I don't really know all the details, so. Uh, you might want to, uh, you know, speak to Brad about that, um, and uh, you know, you can uh, uh, email him at uh, Brad at, or I'm sorry, it's uh, B G Brad Gilbert. So that's uh, Bravo Golf. Uh, in fact, let me just throw it in the chat uh, at Traders for Traders dot com. Okay. And uh, and then also there's uh, yeah my my email uh, is bp at traders for traders okay so uh, anyway I uh, just uh, want to let you guys know about that uh, you know basically uh, uh, you get uh, coaching uh, as, you know become uh, uh, integrated with the trading team uh, and uh, uh, get to hang out um, at the desk and uh, be in, in a professional trading environment where you can just learn so much, uh, so many little details uh, that start to come out. Uh, and that makes quite a difference than compared to uh, trading at home. Okay. And that's, uh, that's what we've come to understand. Uh, you, you know, all these little kind of details, they start to add up and uh, you start to get a much clearer picture and direction um, uh, for uh, uh, the markets. Okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's a nice thing that, uh, that we're offering, and uh, it's a new new program, and uh, just want to share that with you guys. Okay. All right. Um, so that uh, that about wraps it up. Uh, yeah. No more questions. Then uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thanks guys for showing up. Uh, we'll uh, we'll catch you at the next one. Okay. All right. Yeah. Take care.